Hello everyone, my name is Alexis Brooks from Quest and I'd like to welcome you to today's Reconnect Dive Deep session. I have a few reminders before we get started. Attendees will remain muted throughout the session. However, if you'd like to unmute um, to ask a question, use the raise the hand feature and we will give you permission to speak at that time. Attendees can also type their questions into the Q&A module of your Zoom toolbar and we'll address any questions at the end of this session. At this time, I'll turn things over to our speaker, our speaker Randall, and thank you. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, appreciate it. And it looks like folks are joining. So uh, happy to once again be doing the Reconnect Dive Deep Conference. Uh, Got to see many of you at the live conference earlier this year, and um, really excited that we've got these twice a year opportunities now with, with Quest. Uh, with that said, uh, I am going to be presenting a topic I've actually presented with um, Gary Wilhelm from Hackensack Meridian Health a number of times. Uh, we actually implemented this uh function, PeopleSoft Expenses, Google Maps, uh, Duo, uh, uh, Multi-Factor. We did this in 2019, literally right before uh, the end of the world. And um, we had a great go live and then the pandemic hit and there was no travel. <laughs> so we, we didn't get a chance to really use the features and functions much uh, for almost a year before users started coming back and, and travel started happening again. So uh, we've been able to present this, I think this might be our eighth or ninth presentation at various conferences. So we're happy that it, it continues to be selected. Uh, I am Randy Johnson, Vice President over at Spear MC. There's my email. Um, I think I even have my phone number at the very end of the presentation. I'll answer if you call. A um, little bit of a bait and switch. You can see my hair is not as brown as it was when I started with Spear MC almost 10 years ago, over 10 years ago now. Um, and then my co-presenter, I don't think is able to uh, attend. Um, he's got some things that he's got going on. Uh, Gary Wilhelm, if you've been to any of the conferences in the past, I don't know, six years, you've probably seen Gary at, at one of them. Gary is a uh, recurring recipient of the Innovator Awards that uh, Oracle has has been uh, providing the customers with uh, in, in, implementations such as the uh, expenses module that we did collectively. Um, Hackensack is uh, really interested in expanding and maintaining their PeopleSoft footprint. And um, a lot of these features and functions. In fact, if you stay tuned in about two hours, we're going to be presenting on the um, supplier enablement project and the procure to pay uh, functions that are going on. Lots and lots and lots of activity going on in Hackensack Meridian Health. Um, they uh, are one of the largest integrated healthcare networks in New Jersey. Um, in fact, they even have a teaching uh, hospital and so they they not only use PeopleSoft Financials and PeopleSoft HCM, but they also use campus solutions. They're they're all three pillars of PeopleSoft. Um, here they are in the New Jersey area. Um, depending on how you measure size, they are uh, the largest provider of, of healthcare in the state of New Jersey. Happy to be presenting with HMH again this week. Uh, again, I have a presentation later this afternoon where we talk about the uh, what we're calling the procure to pay optimization or the supplier enablement. It has two two names to that project, um, and that's an exciting uh, project that we've been waiting to do for now a couple of years. Um, on to what SpearMC is. If you have not heard of us. Um, I'd be surprised, but uh, we are a PeopleSoft first organization. We continue to be all in on PeopleSoft and everything we do, manage, manage services, consulting, training, it all, it all centers around our experience on the PeopleSoft product, our, our Gartner recognized PeopleSoft expertise. 
Um, even our cloud emphasis is Oracle Cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure, migrating your PeopleSoft onto uh, OCI and hosting there. And we do have some experience on uh, the cloud products, in particular, the Oracle Guided Learning feature, which is a part of our latest emerging technologies, training technologies that we have. So if you're interested, um, I think in the People Tools debrief yesterday, we heard a lot about Oracle Guided Learning. SpearMC is the uh, reseller of that, and we have awesome products that are uh, sold as starter kits to get you off the ground. Um, Cameron McClurg will have a couple of presentations, I think, including a demo during the week. Okay, <clears throat> one one more slide, I think, about SpearMC, and then we'll get into the, to the details of our expenses implementation at HMH. Um, we, we're Gartner recognized, we're, we're uh, SOC 2 Type 2 certified, and again, our goal and our continued emphasis is to really work with clients that, that are in the PeopleSoft ecosystem, staying in the PeopleSoft ecosystem, or even considering leaving uh, and need a partner to host their PeopleSoft product while you entertain moving to um, the cloud. Uh, we could free up your internal resources, support the product, and let them focus on the migration to cloud, however long that may take. So that's our area. One of our uh, beginnings was to, to build out a training curriculum for our customers, and it continues to be a heart and soul of PMC. We, we love training, and we've we're happy to, if you snap that QR code, happy to announce a whole bunch of new trainings that are offered, um, including Campus Solutions, our, our newest curriculum there, um, open source, or I'm sorry, open search dashboards, which, which used to be Kibana. Um, we're continuing to focus on that. Um, you can read all of the others that we've got going on. I highly recommend you take a look at this. Um, we've reintroduced the uh, system administrator training, which had been uh, not offered in the last couple of years. So take a look at all that we have to offer in training. Um, the trainers that we have are implementers. These are real world consultants who do implementation for a living. And so you get great anecdotal um, experience when you receive your training from experience trainers. On to what we did at HMH. My abbreviation for Hackensack Meridian Health is HMH. Um, by the way, I have two screens going, and if you have questions, I'll from time to time bounce my eyes down to the question and answers section. I'm not going to type any answers during the presentation, but um, I'll do my best to answer them live. If you happen to have any questions, um, please feel free to do that. Um, I think Alexis might have said, raise your hand. And if she sees your hand out there, we can, I believe, take you off mute and we can ask your question on it as well. So what was done way back in toward the end of 2019 um, at, at HMH? Well, there was a desire to get, I, I mentioned their desire is to be on PeopleSoft if PeopleSoft has a solution. Um, to have as many functions, business processes contained within PeopleSoft as, as they can, um, minimize integrations. They do have the three pillars. And so there's, there's integrations between those three. And so the more functions that can happen within the PeopleSoft ecosystem, uh, the easier it is to maintain the entire suite. So. Let's talk about the journey. Let's talk about some of the problems, our solution, and then a deep dive into the solution. I actually have screenshots in part, and I have recorded videos of the solution at work, um, in particular, the solution around Google Maps. So why, did, why was it that HMH wanted to do this particular project? Uh, certainly, Fluid was a big part of it. Mobile was a big part of it. When when Fluid and mobile were um, real, 
the, the user community saw that using their mobile devices for things like expense reports and ultimately uh, workflow approvals and, and other features uh, was, was a reality. Um, the technical team wanted to streamline as much as possible onto the PeopleSoft platform. And as the migration to Fluid was happening for the rest of PeopleSoft on campus, on HCM and financials, it made sense to deploy a new module, the expenses module. Um, so with workflow already in place for many business processes on HCM and financials, um, adding the expenses workflow to that list was uh, was really important as well. Um, users wanted a single place to go to approve any transactions that were happening within their business processes. Um, instead of using Excel and, and paper-based flows, there was a desire, of course. <laughs> this, is, this is almost 1990s discussion of moving to a paperless operation. Um, and then the internal controls through what, what we uh, implemented for travel authorizations, not just travel authorizations, but internal controls over the policies of the expense report process. And I'll talk about some others beyond just the pre-travel authorizations um, that we implemented that, uh, that were needed, not, not only for internal control purposes, but also for statutory purposes in the state of New Jersey. Uh, that I'll touch on, I think, toward the end of the presentation. One of the things that we knew was going to be something that had to be uh, <laughs> addressed, I should say, is uh, change management. <clears throat> we knew that that users were going to be forced onto PeopleSoft for the first time on financials. Many had, had used all, had used the HCM suite, but many were, were simply not financials users. And when we went to deploy all of the expense reports in PeopleSoft, it added almost uh, 10 times as many users to the system as there were financials users um, earlier. And we knew that there was going to be some change management. And so <laughs> we used the benevolent dictator approach and we used executive leadership to um, essentially provide communications that in fact this was happening, that the system would be used, that individuals would be able to do their expense reports and their approvals by their phone. Um, and, and so as, as we knew this was going to be rolled out, it was it coincided with, with mobile activity on, uh, on the HCM side. So luckily, users were already introduced to Fluid on the phone. Um, in this case, Fluid was going to turn into expense reports and, and financial approvals as well. Uh, but the core community needed to get over the fact that Fluid was a different way of navigating and a different, the whole tile homepage function, which is not something that the core users had um, experienced. And so this is where the benevolent dictatorship came in. Uh, we, just, we just had their support Users were told to uh, learn the new way because the old way was going away and it was relatively seamless, to be honest. Uh, users were uh, a part of the testing, a part of the training, and so it really wasn't the backlash that, uh, that we thought it was going to be. Okay, uh, not, not to mention, go ahead and use your tiles. It's the fastest way to get to your transactions uh, if you need to use the navigation collections and then the nav bar tiles over on the on the navigator, those work just fine too. So there are so many ways to personalize your experience in the PeopleSoft Fluid ex it, it world. I think most of us by now are there. Uh, back in 2019, this was new for HMH, and so it was a, it was actually a pretty big deal. Okay. Uh, 
what we were talking about earlier, I was talking about earlier, is a uh, demand in the user community to access the system remotely. Um, they also, in the IT organization, wanted to make sure that we standardize the look and feel um, for all users that were going to get it remotely um, and make it simple. We also wanted to make sure that there were some some secure features and functions in place so that you did have limitations to some of the things that you could do when accessing PeopleSoft remotely versus what you could do when you're connected uh, in in uh, either either by Citrix, uh, which is their which is their um, uh, system that they use when when accessing computer based transactions from their home or away from the office. Um, we needed to make sure that that, that was in place. Um, so security was first and foremost, it, always a consideration while rolling out mobile access. So going to Fluid was the first step. We knew that you needed to be on Fluid to be able to invoke the, the mobile features and functions in PeopleSoft that we were desiring. Uh, but I think all of you by now know that Fluid doesn't equal mobile, right? It, it's just, it's the presentation layer on mobile that you're looking for, but we needed to add security layers. And so we added two. We added Duo, two-factor authentication that was enabled through uh, Appsian PathLock now, um, functionality. And so what we did with that combination is anytime a user is accessing PeopleSoft remotely, whether it's on a PC or on their phone, um, and it's outside the firewall, they are faced with two-factor authentication. And once that happens, then PathLock comes in and it restricts what users can do. In our case, we restricted the functionality to entering or approving expense reports, um, looking at things like journal entries, but we restricted activities that were not appropriate to be done outside of the office. For example, printing of anything was, was turned off. The ability to, to run the processes was turned off as a uh, output to printers so that you didn't print sensitive information and leave it on a printer which you obviously wouldn't have access to if you were connecting outside the network. So we were able to pull in the path lock. Uh, HMH already had Duo as their MFA uh, enterprise system. And so within a month, we deployed employee self-service and leader self-service in mobile. We had a prototype functioning in one week with the help of the team from AppScene. Uh, Pathlock, <laughs> sorry, uh, they've changed their name a few times. Um, they're a great business partner of ours. And in fact, if you've, if you've seen any of Gary's presentations, uh, a lot of times he'll pull out his phone and he will literally do a demo for you on, on what happens anytime he tries to access the system literally using his phone. I've got a screenshot in here. Um, <laughs> so we received... The Innovator Award in 2018 was actually just the Fluid User Interface. 2019 was the expenses and a couple of the features that we're about to talk about, Google Maps, um, that, that happened. And as I mentioned, uh, the minute we went live, travel almost ground to a complete halt. And so we didn't get to experience a big uh, intake in new expense reports. Um, at the beginning, uh, maybe that was for the best, right? We got to we got to uh, ease into it, if you will. We did get a, a, a one expense report for each user who was uh, new to the organization and had to attend uh, in person orientation. That was about it, though. <laughs> that was about it for almost a year and a half. We didn't have a whole lot of expense reports flowing in. Still got an innovator award, though. Um, some screenshots, screenshots of the application. I'm gonna put my watch over here so I, 
I don't accidentally go wrong. Um, in at, at HMH, we have leader self service, employee self service. The my way is the is the feature and function. That's the only exposed. Uh, my way and leader self service are the only exposed home pages if you access from outside the firewall. So if you do access from outside the firewall, what will happen is you've all seen this, right? On the phone, send me a push. And then I've already set my ID with my dual account. And so once I get that, uh, that, that option, I mean, either have it call me, send me a push, my, my preferred, uh, enter a passcode. In this case, send me a push. Boom. I approve. Now I'm in and I can do the things I need to do as an external, um, with external access. Okay. There's some screenshots in here on this is this is the path lock setup pages where we can set up the IP addresses, firewall actions, what type of logging happens when what type of activity uh, occurs. These are these are here for your reference. If, if you're interested in a demo from Pathlock, I highly recommend you reach out to them. Uh, this this feature was a lifesaver. Like I said, one week. We put it in, it was working in prototype. Less than a month, we were ready to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually play for you a video of the um of, of the features and functions. But what what you can see here is we had a um office to office function that was a customization in expenses. Essentially, the way this works is uh each office that, that has a physical location at HMH, each one, the two points between the two was predefined. How many miles? It didn't matter which route you took. It didn't matter whether you went home first and came to the second office. It was predefined on what that GPS distance would be. And so we built that matrix. Um, actually, this screenshot, I think in the recording you might see, we found the need to have a um, round trip indicator added to the to the uh, to the expense type because what would happen is if you if you made this trip in the morning and then reversed it and made it back in the afternoon, expenses was actually thinking that it was a duplicate, a potential duplicate. It was flagging it as a duplicate because it was the same expense type, same exact amount on the same day. And so what we did was we added a uh, round trip indicator, yes, no, a little slider there. And if it was a round trip, it would double the amount of miles that were pre-calculated based on the two distances between office and office. Um, if it is a, and then you could, you, we had a little, you could add up to, I think there were up to 10 um, segments that you could add here. If we clicked another, this button, it would, it would add additional distances between the two and calculate the predefined distance. Once you add another one, the uh, round trip indicator was uh, no longer valid. Okay, so this was, uh, this was a feature. And the way that we did this was we, we actually have Google Maps in the background that, whoops, Google Maps in the background that we can use to calculate. In this case, case even when we click GPS distance, it was it was actually using the matrix because it's office to office. In regular mileage, these two starting and ending points would be any two points like you would in Google Maps when you use it to, to give you navigation assistance on your phone. Um, the calculate would give you the actual shortest distance between the two. You could set it to shortest distance or fastest route, um, avoid tolls, just like anything you can in, in the Google Maps feature um, you can do when calculating regular mileage. So this was office to office, regular mileage. We put our start and end points um, and we added a, a save feature. So you can save that if it's a your home to a, a typical uh, you know, location, you can save that as a favorite so that you, rather than typing it every time, you just pull it in from your favorites. I think that's in the recording here in a second. Um, 
since this is 2019, we had not yet partnered with Oracle to build out the Oracle guided learning for PeopleSoft function. Uh, oh, I got a question. Did you have to create an interface out to GUMAC? Yes. So the question is, did we have to create an interface? And what we had to do was call the Google Maps API. Okay. And so there, there's a function delivered by Oracle that calls it an API, but it uses Oracle Maps, not Google Maps, um, which we tried. It didn't suit our needs. At HMH, the uh, entire enterprise is moving to Google for everything. So they have a they have a Google Enterprise account. Most of you probably have one too, so that you, you can can add your uh, search criteria and be one of the you know one of those that pops up the top three or something like that. Um, you need a Google Enterprise account. It's not expensive uh, to be able to integrate with that API. But you've probably seen this in any any web website that you've ever been to where you, you want to map to the location. It's calling that Google Map API. So it's very, very uh, standard function for any developers. But yes, we had to put that into the system uh, as the Google Maps API instead of the Oracle Maps API, okay? Um, so it wasn't hard, but it is a customization. Thanks for the question, Tracy. What we built at HMH predated our um, relationship with Oracle in building out the Oracle guided learning tool set. I will reiterate that Oracle guided learning, it's probably one of our hottest um, offerings right now. Um, it is superior to user productivity kit, vastly superior. And um, well, just catch one of Cameron's presentations this week on Oracle guided learning. I, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. But before that existed, uh, we either used user productivity kit if clients had that um, purchase, or we had been working with Adobe Captivate as a recording process. In fact, the recorded videos that I'm gonna show you here um, are Adobe Captivate trainings. And what we did was we, we had a training, a learning, um, navigation collection, each one of these was a recorded video that the users could play to learn how to do um, any of the features that were new to them on uh, PeopleSoft expenses. All right. So uh, here's what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and play it and monitor my questions. I don't see any. Okay. So we're going to select the expenses tile. We're going to create a new expense report. We have to pick a business purpose. You can have those business purpose. These were the ones that were allowable. Um, you, you can have these predefined in your user options if you want. This is gonna be a regular mileage, I think. Um, so we're gonna add some expense lines here. Okay, let's see what expense type I pick here. Um, going, going to pick a date in the past and the expense type here I'm going to pick is personal auto miles. Okay. And what you notice down below, I should probably hit pause, is our personal auto miles. This 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 before this is before we put in the uh the round trip indicator, I believe. Uh you have the ability to save as favorites. Okay. I could save it as a favorite. I haven't typed anything. And our starting and ending point, and then calculate. This will calculate using Google Maps. So calling out to API on Google Maps. And once we do that, I'll actually be able to display that map as well. Um, what, what we've done um, on the approvals, we've, we've taken this map and we've put it on the approval page so that the, the approver can click display map and see the path that the user took and validate that the mileage that they've entered is appropriate. Um, I think in this one we still required <laughs> we still required a, uh, a a receipt, so I had to do a screenshot and do it. Oh, that's my house. 
if anybody wants to come visit me at my home, that's my home address. And uh, uh, this is my son's address in Chicago. So let's find out what the distance is. I could save it. <laughs> and I'm claiming it's an airport round trip. We'll all just uh, hopefully get past that. This is uh, custom functionality. So now we see that the save as is out there for future reference. And the question that came up was, was that, was that delivered functionality or custom? It is, it is fun, uh, custom. We had to customize the save as. This was a pretty important requirement that the users had that once we had a standard starting and ending point, um, for example, if this really was my home to the airport, it would be nice to be able to not have to type the starting and ending points each and every time. Um, and then this calculate GPS is where we inserted the API for Google Maps. And as we do that, it calculated 38 miles. I say display map and boom, there's my map. Actually, I think take a picture of it because <laughs> Because we we don't do this anymore, but we had required that the uh, that that an attachment be added to this expense type. Which look, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest don't require attachments, don't require receipts for mileage. Just have the map available. Okay, um, receipts are redundant in my opinion for that expense type. Um, how many individuals were in the car with me? Just one. And I, and I had to save it. This is where I'm saving it so that I have a, uh, I have a receipt that I can attach. All right. And off we go. Saving. Okay. Again, don't do this. I had to just so I could submit it, but we're not going to, we're not going to require our users to, uh, to, to attach receipts, are we, for, for such things? Okay, it was it was about three months that we were live before we realized we needed a round trip indicator because it was tripping us up with the, um, oh, now we're gonna go ahead and submit this for approval. Off it goes, boom, there, now it's gone. And we see that it's been sent for approval. Okay, now, let, now let's look at the difference that we put in for uh, office to office, okay? So office to office, as I mentioned, we built a matrix. We built a matrix of each start and end point. Um, we're gonna do the same start and end process. We're gonna create a new expense report. We're gonna enter, we're gonna enter a business purpose and I'm gonna go faster, okay. Uh, here's the date. I think I think we had a uh, a situation where I, this got recorded in August, and I needed to. The, the, August wasn't open yet in this test environment. So here here is different ways to search and expenses. This is all delivered expense categories, or if I've used it frequently, it's going to be on there. Um, expense type, and then search by name, office to office mileage. All right, we're going to pick that one and. Here, here's here you can see. Whoops. Let me go back just a here. Here you can see a starting and ending point. Okay. Well, we this this recording was in a, a actually a, a non-production copy. Didn't have the uh, the save as we didn't do a save as for the office to office because we didn't need to. This matrix always was based on how many at uh, what the what the pre-approved distance was, but we did have the round trip indicator added. Um, again, because <laughs> if they had it listed twice on the same expense report for the same day, we ended up. So I picked the two locations. I say it defaults to yes. <laughs> Most users said that the most common thing is is a round trip. Um, so if you need to change it, you change it to no. And in this case, we turned off requiring a receipt for the expense type office to office. So we submit and off it is ready to go. Um, I will say that these 
uh, recordings are probably not going to be posted in the um, in in the when I post the presentation because they're just too large. Um, if you're interested in live uh, demo of what we've done at HMH, we can certainly arrange for that. But um, what we have in the presentation here, those recorded videos, make it um, make it too large for me to to uh, to post into the uh, uh, final, final presentation. So, um, again, if you need them, reach out to me and I will make sure that we either give you a live walkthrough or, um, I can find a way to get you access to those recorded videos. Uh, so what was required for customization in our overall solution? Google Maps is a, a and the ability to save as favorites is a customization. Uh, we can heavily use the um, the functions that Oracle delivered for Google or Oracle Maps, uh, but but we we essentially turn that off and we use the APIs that Google Maps allows and uh, we're in business. Once again, you do need to, oh and by the way, the, the favorites, when you save those, those are personalized. So when I save my favorites as an airport commute, it isn't the same as Gary's favorites as his airport commute. He won't see my list of favorites when creating an expense report. It's unique to my user, okay? Um, so that, that required a little bit of uh, customization so that we could store that. Um, I, I will say that what Oracle has released recently in expenses uh, does allow the type ahead. So when you start to type an address that you used before, it recognizes it and it'll let you um, just type the first three, four letters and and hopefully it'll remember and and, uh, and put that in for you. So that's useful. Um, the office to office was just selections because those office locations are what they are. In fact, uh, we had a situation where one of the offices physically changed. It physically moved. And all we needed to do was update in the matrix between that point and any other office to the new pre-approved distance. And uh, the next time you went to that same quote location, which is a physical building that was across the street, um, the new approved mileage would, would, um, would pop up. So the office to office matrix is custom. Um, it includes pages that we use to set up the matrix. So each office and each uh, the paired office location gets updated with its distance, its pre-approved distance. Um, and, and the organization reviews that um, on an annual basis. If they have new ones, it's easy to add additional offices into the matrix. With, uh, with the you know, plus button. So that, that, was a, that was a good customization that we built out. The round trip calculator, again, super important because it kept triggering, um, warning you that you might have duplicates on your expense report if you put the same path twice. Uh, still might happen if you, you know, if you have two very similar and equal mileage amounts, um, but but at least the round trip indicator was able to uh, remove most of those issues. Um, there is also Oracle has delivered the ability now, it used to be that when you set up expenses, installation options level, you had to pick whether the cash or the, the, the reimbursement, I shouldn't say cash, but the reimbursement due to the, the traveler was going to be done through payroll or through AP. And you were stuck if you had non-employees that did expense reports. Um, remember what I said about HMH having the um, campus solutions? Well, they actually had students that had travel expenses that got reimbursed. They were not considered employees. And so, um, but HMH wanted the employee users to be reimbursed through payroll uh, for the next reason down below. And I'll get to that in a second, um, among many reasons. And so at the installation options, we had to say, 
it's going to payroll. Reimbursement is going through payroll. And we had this group of users. Um, there were also board members, non-employees, but they got expense report reimbursements that um, needed to be reimbursed. So we had to build a customization to allow if, if it was a non-employee that was an expenses user, uh, they would get paid through AP. This has been fixed. So Oracle now has delivered the ability to determine at the user level, you still default at installation options, which one is gonna be used. But now on the expense user, we can say, hey, instead of payroll, they don't get it. So we're going AP. Um, so that, that does give us an opportunity to roll back that customization at HMH. We haven't, haven't done it yet, but it, uh, the feature exists now where it's going to um, allow us to pull that customization back. Um, one more is in New Jersey, if you submit an expense report more than 90 days from the date it was uh, recognized or that, that you had the expense, um, it, it's actually considered taxable income to you. Um, you have 90 days, apparently, in the state of New Jersey to submit your expenses for reimbursement. And if you don't do it in that 90-day period, it needs to show up as a taxable income on your W-2. And so uh, we had to build that in. We had to build mm -hmm. in. So th the feature exists to flag as uh, high risk what, what's called older transactions. And you get to define what older means. Uh, we had to take that a step further and say, look, if it's older than 90 days, then this particular, remember, they're getting a reimbursed through payroll, okay? What would happen is for every expense type that we had, we also had a taxable version of that expense type. And if the expense type that you submitted, let's say it was for mileage or let's say it was for airfare, if it was more than 90 days old, it flipped to the taxable expense type version, which meant when it went off to payroll, it added it to your total income and you need to pay tax at the end of the year. There was no withholding done, but it was added to your taxable income on your W-2. That's a New Jersey rule. I don't know how many other states have it, uh, but it, this is not something that Oracle will ever put in their product uh, because it's not considered legal <laughs> in some states to force people to. So, you got some states that say it's taxable, some states that say that that's not legal to do to a uh, to a traveler. So um, depending on where you live, I guess you've got to make that decision what, what you need to do in the system. Um, <clears throat> one more, it, this actually wasn't a customization. Um, what we wanted to be able to do was enforce the rule that if you were to be traveling and, and your expense report you knew you would have airfare or hotel or actually car rental as well. If we, if you knew that, then you had to get a pre-travel authorization, which is a function in the expenses module. So a TA, a travel authorization was required anytime you had airfare or hotel. And if so, so we, what we did was we flagged it as high risk. If you picked those expense types, but didn't have a travel authorization associated with it, it was flagged as high risk. And actually what we did was we route it. You still could do it. You get a warning and then it would rather than to your direct HR supervisor, it would route to the executive vice president of the food chain. <laughs> okay, so you are a policy breaker and uh, you still have the opportunity to get that expense approved and routed, but you have to go up uh, much, much higher than you typically would for your approval. So we, we tweaked the approval workflow engine, uh, which primarily focused on your reporting hierarchy, your supervisor hierarchy. Uh, which we got from from HCM, um, that that's 100% delivered functionality. In the case where you submit without the travel authorization, it was sent to the executive VP for for their approval, with an indication that uh, uh, this particular rule had been broken. So I'm happy to say, expenses in 
it, it fully implemented, enjoyed by all employees now. It's been many, many years since they've gone live. Um, and they are uh, the, 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 by far the most used function is office to office. The second most is the personal mileage. So those two expense types are probably 90% of all expense types submitted by users within the organization. Uh, it was pretty important to get those features in so that 90% of expense reports would, would uh, find favorable use. Um, and uh, we've had tremendous, tremendous use of the expenses module um, in the last several years. So uh, they, there is a, uh, there is a uh, uh, monitor that they have and, and a, a dashboard uh, showing the uh, user adoption of expenses. And right around 2021, it is when it started to skyrocket. Um, there are more users who use it from their phone than their PC. And even approvers now are doing it more from their phone than from their PC. So uh, we think it's we think it's quite successful. All right, um, that does bring me to the end. I'm early, I believe, uh, or late. I think it was an hour long presentation. Um, I I didn't put my phone number on there. You need to get a hold of me eight four seven five zero seven seven six four seven. That's me. That'll get me direct. That's my email. Feel free to reach out any way I will respond. Um, Alexis, I'm ready now. If anybody wants to have any more questions, happy to happy to take them. Certainly, Certainly. I'm ready if you guys want to raise your hands and we can unmute you. I don't see any takers just yet. Yeah, shy group. <laughs> I want to start scrolling down the attendees and call people out by name. I'm I'm really not going to do that. <laughs> Folks, we're we're going to give you a going once. Twice, no hands raised. Okay, well, with that said, um, hey, I, I hope everyone has an enjoyable session. Rate it, rate this particular presentation. Give me five stars, like your Uber driver. Give me, uh, give me a thumbs up. I had to do it solo, right? Feel sorry for me. And um, hey, if uh, if anybody wants more information, I've got an appendix out here of all of the C presentations that are going on this week. There are a lot, 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 lot of them. I've called out a few. The procure to pay optimization that we did at HMH, I'm doing that this afternoon. These times are quoted in Eastern time. Um, I, I'm working with Sanjay Todi to do a presentation on the Match Exception Collaboration Center, which is a new feature that Oracle has, has rolled out um, in the procure to pay space. Um, Oracle Guided Learning tomorrow, 2.15. This is uh, Cameron. Another presentation um, on Thursday. This was with uh, Kaiser Permanente and what was done there. Um, and I've got I've got a pretty exciting presentation. I think it's tomorrow. Uh, using where are you? Uh, yes, the month end close using activity guides to automate your month end close process. So uh, hey, take take advantage. I shouldn't pick out one of these or any of these, but pay attention to all of them. We think it's fantastic. Here's all the training that is set up in the next two months. I highly recommend you go back to the uh, uh, Sphere website, check out all of our training and sign up for the ones that interest you. All right. Okay. That's it. I guess <laughs> more, more appendices. That's the end. Alexis, I think we're done. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Randall, for sharing your expertise with our audience. It's much appreciated. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.